Hello my fellow golfers, happy, frustrated as, as you might be. Mike Duro here at Fiddler's Creek, my new digs here in Naples, Florida. A beautiful place. Okay, my question this week was how do those women on the LPGA hit the ball so good when they look like they're barely moving? They get the club back and they swing and they hit it really well. Well, I went to the CME, the championship here at Tiburon this last week and they, it's true, they swing so beautifully, so efficiently, and I went home and studied it. I watched C Sing Young Kim, the winner, and her arms just drop in there and hit the ball so good. So, in slow motion, watching it, watching them in person, here's what I gained from it, and I wanna pass it on to you. I really think it's just really efficient, but if you look at how they use it, they use gravity golf. Now gravity golf, that is using the power of gravity with a little displacement of weight and these arms will whip sling out there really fast. It, it's based on being tension free. If you want to look it up, David Lee invented the term gravity golf in about 2002, but golfers have been doing it. Jack Nicklaus did it, all good players, Lee Trevino. So through the ages, gravity golf is certainly there because your arms will fall from ear high to belt high. It's just, we're gonna focus on it. The, a couple of tips that David Lee brought up about gravity golf. Okay, so gravity golf must be tension free. So, but you can't start tension free or these arms will be like noodles, they'll go everywhere. So you start with a little structure. Your arms are in a V and you feel a little structure because you're going to heave them, that's what Dave Lee, David Lee said, you throw your arms into a free fall position of no tension. So you're gonna, you're gonna give them some speed right here to belt high and then the rest is slow, it goes up here. And when I say up here, the three parts of the heave or the backswing are to put it in the right arc. So if I take my arms around, that's not a good place to go. And if I went out, that's not good. So you, he you heave them in the right direction over by your right shoulder. You heave them to a place of free fall where they have width. That's the other part. And width shouldn't be hard. If you have structure here and then you stay loose, remember the club wants to keep going. So you're going to give it structure and then stay away. Now. So the three parts are you swing it in the right path, you get it to a place of tension free, this is a very important tension free place where it can fall, and you have arc width. So arc width, what is it? Is your arm perfectly straight? No, and that's, that's gonna be tension arc width, okay? So you need this kind of position. If I swing my arms like a person, like that, see where they are? Is that arm straight? No, but it's got some width. Okay, some players might be a little narrower, but you want to get as much consistent arc width as you can, and you're going to feel like it's in front of you, okay? They say the, the magic slipper is that the club will feel like it's pointing straight up in the air. Look how that club just balances up there. It probably won't be there because your wrists are supple and they'll probably bend a little. But the sensation will be that it's pointing straight up in the air and then you drop and swing. And I have seen some players that get the club almost pointing up. As long as you're tension free there, as long as your arms aren't, your hands aren't tight, then you bump your leg this way and woo, it takes off. It's amazing how free your arms will be, which is the greatest word, freedom. You are not attempting to do anything at the ball. So what's the difference of gravity golf and effort golf? Effort golf would be if I got the club back and I attempted to move the club back to the ball with either thrusting arms, spinning hips as hard as I could, or somebody else might say, bring your chest back to the ball. These are all work words. And, you, and it can be done, by the way, as long as the club gets back in front of you. It's a method, but they're all a little too much work. The tour players on tour now, I guarantee you, they're going back on plane. Then they're trying to do a pivot where they bring their arms here. Then they're trying to go left with the club. Club. That's all great stuff, but the girls don't. They get it up, they drop it to here with a little weight transfer. That's your job in gravity golf, by the way. It's the counter fall. In other words, the club gets weightless, and you have turned your back, by the way. Believe me, it's still the fundamentals are there. You still turn your back, but you're trying to find this arc width. And I can tell you that, you know, 23 inches from my chest, but I'm not there, I'm just arc width. Then I counterbalance with a little step to my left, that's just put your heel down, and the arms will drop. 
If they don't drop, your club must be into a too flat a position. See, that, aren't, that club can't drop, it'll drop that way. So the club is gonna be much more vertical because a vertical club will drop the handle better. Okay, so you're into that free fall. It's a wonderful thing. You just bump and free fall, boom, and off it goes. You can't stand up too much, of course, then you wouldn't have the drop in you, but there is a counter bounce. It takes off. I put these dots on my arm for efficiency. You will see red dots right there, okay? I saw this in Ernie Els once. He said, red dots, red dots, here it comes, red dots. And then all that happens is it switches. And there's blue, it should be green for green light. But it switches really free. Again, you don't have to do that. In fact, if you try to do anything in golf, it ruins speed. So only in freedom can you have the speed. So you're after tension free right here. So you heave it back to your belt. It goes up a little bit to free fall. This is free fall. This is free fall. Watch this club drop right through my hands. Oops, watch this. Shoop. So don't do that so much it hits your hand, it'll hurt, but there, that's a free-falling club. So you get it up to that free-fall position and let it free-fall. When you do that right, watch this shot, Peter. I mean, it's, I, by the way, I tell people your, hand, your arm will get blurry. It goes, give it some speed, then it slows down right here and it falls to here. But if you tried to watch my red dots turn to blue dots, you won't be able to see them. I guarantee you, watch this. Red dots, red dots, red dots, red dots. Then the switch happens. And on, switch can only happen that fast if it's loose. So I get it up into the free fall and then it switches really good. It's in that speed down there that you don't try to create, you wait for it. So gravity is fall, fall, wait for it, wait for it, wait for what? The freedom of switch. Okay, they call it the whip sling, except you can't try to do it. As soon as your brain tries to do it, now you're using muscle and you slowed it down. You've broke down all the physics instead of, so you've added muscular force, but you've destroyed centripetal force, which is what you want, that counterbalance swing that takes off like that. It's free, it's wonderful. You can't have grip pressure, you can't have wrist pressure. You have to have just enough width. That's your goal. Width without tension, drop it and see what happens. And so you're working on something that's real easy. Free fall, plant and go. Give it a try, see how good it feels to hit a ball without muscular power. Thank you, good luck.